Ray Markser. Uh, he is the author of Cowboy in a Corporate World, an experienced cowboy in fourth generation Montana. Uh, he's worked 37 years for Coke Industries Incorporated on the massive Matador cattle, cattle Company Ranch in Southwest Montana. As ranch manager for 21 of those years, Ray's innovative approach to business guided the ranch to consistent profit. Ray served on several governor appointed boards for wildlife, land use and animal health, as well as many organizational committees and boards. He runs a few cows in his retirement, in addition to consulting in artificial, uh, in addition to his consulting and artificial insemination business, Ranch Services West. I am a cowboy. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Isn't that a commercial? Well, uh, I'll briefly say this. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what my plan is. I'm going to I'm going to speak to you and share some things uh, for about 15 minutes, and then we're going to show a video that my wife Susie put together of a number of her pictures uh, throughout our years on the Matador, and. Uh, that, that lasts about 12 minutes, but uh, I'll, I'll say this before I start talking and before we show the video, every one of those pictures has a story that I could spend a week with. I've, I've, got, I've got a total of a half an hour to do this. Okay, I'll try and get a little closer. Is that better? Okay. Uh, I can't hardly say hello in 15 minutes, so uh, I'll get to it. So I, I was blessed, God blessed me in my life to uh, uh, allow me to pursue a passion that I had from a little boy, and that was to be on a big ranch, to run a big ranch. And uh, he, he gave me that, that uh, granted me that passion. I got to spend 37 years on one of the oldest, biggest ranches in Montana. And, and uh, you know, it, it started, and, and we're talking about growing Montana. And I got to be, we all are, but I got to be a real part of history. And I realized that a couple of years ago and wrote a book about it. But this this ranch, which originally was called the P&O, the headquarters is about 10 miles south of Dillon, was started in 1864, Poindexter and Orr. Orr trailed some cattle from Oregon into the Beaverhead Valley there, going to Bannock to feed the, the miners in 1864. When he got there in, in the fall of 1864, the, the real gold rock had already moved to Virginia City. So he turned his cattle loose and wintered them in the Blacktail, which is south of Dillon. And they did so well, he, they decided, he and his partner decided, this is where we're going to start a ranch. And they, they did, 1864. That's a year before the end of the Civil War. That's 12 years before Custer's last stand. I got to spend 37 years covering that same country. And doing the same thing that they were, which God um, told us or granted us to do in his uh, direction. In Psalm 104, 14, he said, he causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he might bring forth food out of the earth. That pretty much validates and justifies what I've done for my life. It's, it's a, a noble profession. I also... Uh, would share with you that uh, I don't take lightly the experiences that I got to, to have there on a, on a piece of ground that takes in more than 500 square miles of southwestern Montana. Put it in perspective, that's more than a third of the size of the state of Delaware. <laughs> There's only been a handful of, of men throughout that from 1864 on have got the opportunity to manage that place. Uh, I was one, I got to be the manager of that ranch for 21 years. Uh, that's a big responsibility, it's a big opportunity also, but uh, the the Matador, the p &O, it started out as the p and it went Poindexter and Orson owned it. 
until about 1944. Uh, they had literally gone broke. They they were innovators like you wouldn't believe, but they had literally gone broke through the tough times. They sold it to a family by the name of Mace from California. They had it for about seven years. And then they sold it to Fred Koch, the, the founder of Koch Industries in 1951. His, he and his sons and their family continued that operation uh, for 70 years. I was there for 37 of those years. So I got to experience and to influence quite a bit of the time that they had in the ownership of that ranch. Not in 2021, the ranch sold to Rupert Murdoch. It was a pretty big deal. Uh, and uh, sold for $200 million, the largest transaction that he land in Montana to history. Uh, but besides that, um, I got to experience things there that are, are unique that a lot of other people never will get the chance to. Excuse me. I got to ride where, where the Native Americans camped and lived their lives prior to uh, white settlers coming in. I got to spend time. Susie and I rode part of the, the freight road that went from Kareen, Utah to, Salt, or to Virginia City, Montana in the 1860s and 70s. That went through a lot of the ranch. Sue and I went and rode part of it that we hadn't rode yet yesterday uh just just to do it <clears throat> i gotta get in here <laughs> so uh the one of the other first was square and compass it's pretty famous in the historical deal that was the first brand registered in the state of montana there's a number of firsts that, that have happened with the ranch uh throughout history um i um, okay, up until I started in 1974 as a 21-year-old kid on a cowboy crew. At that time, we still had sheep. The ranch still had sheep, about 4,000. They'd cut down from about 12,000. They started getting out of the sheep business in about 1970, along with most of the neighbors. Um, in 1975, we sheared land sheared and shipped the last 4,000 sheep off that ranch in 1975. Another end of an era thing that I, I got to experience was that I also in 1976 got to experience shipping the last cattle on a train out of Manita. We shipped dry cows to Idaho Falls, just 60, 70 miles away on the train. It's the last cattle shipped out. So I, I've, I've gotten to experience a lot of of things. Um, also, in, in the early 70s, um, it was sheep, cattle. Uh, we ran it with large crews, mostly single men. We had bunk houses, three or four cookhouses scattered throughout. It was very primitive as in today's standards. We didn't, uh, they just got the first stock trailer on the ranch the year that just prior to me going there in 74. Uh, but even they didn't use it a lot the first year or two. Uh, they did have an old stock truck that we would haul around to some areas, but um, most of the time we, we rode everywhere. We just trailed. If, if we had to go from one camp to an, another 30, 40 miles away, we just gathered up the horses we were going to use in the next few days trailed in there. It's nothing to drop 50 miles in a day, but nothing. I've got a saddle that I, I bought and had made in 1979, uh, brand new from Three Forks, that I figure I've got 130,000 miles. In a <laughs> to put that in perspective, that's more than five times around the Earth's circumference. Uh, and I still got a butt. Um, yeah, I spent, I was on a cowboy crew early in 1974, and then shortly thereafter, 21, they asked me to go to Sage Creek, which is up by Dell. There was a 90,000 acre portion of the ranch in one chunk. 
and uh, they needed a foreman up there. And so I went up there as a 21 year old kid to run that place. I was there for 11 years, okay. uh, learned so much. And that's where I got to really fall in love with the land. There's, uh, there's places up there that I could show you on a map today. Google Earth's got nothing on me because I could show I could go I could show you on a map right today where there are teepee rings that nobody knows about, where the old the old freight road went, where there were homesteads. At one time in that area, there was thirty seven homesteads. Now there is one ranch. That's the way things have changed. Uh, there used to be a gigantic shearing shed up there. That they would shear. 40,000 sheep a year. Uh, they could share 30, there was 30 shearing heads in one spot there. Uh, that's all gone. But we started a rest rotation grazing system up there and, and started managing our land better. We learned a lot from that in that. And then um, after the 11 years there, then I became the, the cow foreman on the entire ranch that uh, encompassed about then about 300,000 acres. We ran about 6,000 cows roughly uh, then. And I was a cow foreman for five or six years then uh, until uh, 1990 when I became manager of the ranch. Um, that cow foreman job, <clears throat> that if it literally was the biggest human job I've ever witnessed in all my career in any in any business. It was the most demanding of, of, of one human being. Uh, when you think about you had the responsibility of hiring, firing, managing 25 or 30 people, a couple hundred, well, 150 head of ranch horses, uh, 6,000 plus cows, and on top of that, three or four cooks and cook houses, um, and then really managing the land, seeing that everything happened. Uh, it was tremendous. Uh, it ate up a lot of good men throughout the years. They, you know, it just, it just wore them out. And uh, I was fortunate enough, I had a good manager that helped me, but when I became manager, I realized we had to change some things because it was it was a tragedy to see real good people in agriculture that got burned out and left agriculture. So in the early 90s, I come up with a, a, an idea and Charles Koch was the head of Koch Industries, was at the same time doing a deal called market-based management. We were doing the same thing and we were what we did was we took and changed a command-based business that most are and still are and turned it into a market-based management where we spread the the authority and and responsibility out over more people and so you weren't so dependent on one person or another it gave people an opportunity to make decisions to have responsibility to be held accountable and then also rewarded when they exceeded their expectations. Um, I can tell you, I, I, I can just touch on 50 years in these few minutes. Um, I did, after Rupert Murdoch bought the ranch in, in 2021, I recognized that uh, everybody kept telling me, you know, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. I never dreamed about writing a book. But I also realized I'd, I'd learned a lot of history from a lot of old timers that I'd spent time with. And some of them were gone and their history was gone. And so I didn't want that to happen. So um, I sat, we decided in January of, of last year to write a book. And... Uh, we published this book in August. I'm no writer, <laughs> uh, but I've got a very talented wife. 
and uh, I wrote all the content. She she heard it at the end of something, but to to really get a grasp of what our life has been and the the book Cowboy in a Corporate World, uh, it's it's been well received. Uh, you can get it at the bookstore here or online. Um, so the nineties, I, I got to be quick. In the nineties, we the Coke had. Uh, we started a, a deal called Coke Beef, and it was a venture to try and have all the, from conception to consumption, uh, the beef industry, uh, you know, so we could get rid of all the inefficiencies. And um, we went for five or six years. We, we learned so much there, but it ended up, we were kind of before our times, and we didn't have the Packard piece of it. And so... Uh, Coke decided to get out of it. So, um, along that same time, the, the ranch got recognized for many environmental stewardship awards. We got like six national environmental stewardship awards. We were national environment, environmental stewardship awards for Montana Star Corps, which we were heavily involved with. And uh, those are very humbling things uh, for us and continue to be. Uh, I guess what I'd say is we we uh, continue to be profitable each year with the use of innovative things. We, that was one of the things that really turns my crank is being innovative and trying to turn obstacles into opportunities. And and we we've had quite a little success at that. But we we managed uh, we to do that by by the improvement in our land management. And are having a cow herd that fit our environment and managing our personnel to where we took the tenure of our employees on our crews from an average of two and a half year tenure when I took over as manager to when I left in 2011, that it was 11 years, our average tenure. Susie, you want to come up and we'll... So, like I said, every every picture on this, we're going to try and get this up here. And every picture has a story. And trust me, I can talk. <laughs> okay. I'll just say that I actually made this, what, 1980? No. Two, 2000. 2005. Yeah. So, I mean, this was before we left the ranch, but and, and it was not a professional... It was just for our family and, and for the people on the ranch. But um, I dug that out and. So. Oh, starting perfect. Okay. Is the book and volume make one? it the, the big. Uh, oh. It's fine. Okay. Is the audio one? No. Okay. I think so. But we're all the way. Yeah. Okay. There's 1,400 Herford cows in that pen.
romantic life of the cowboy. That's the Centennial Valley in the first of December. That's it depends at Sage Creek. That's Sage Creek, so it's kind of high desert. You can see it. Any of you want a cook job? There wasn't any electricity or running water. That was my former manager. That's headquarters. David Cope. The Stoddier Barn in the Centennial Valley. Our son Clayton Wrangling Horses, six years old. That's my son in law. That's her youngest daughter, Anna, Centennial Valley. You're putting out the vibe. Right. It's our son, Clayton. That's Christy, our daughter. Crews were great to our kids. Son in law again. Lives in Kansas now. That's our three little ones. Some of the crew. Steve Stafford, who's my assistant manager, is now up around Stanford. That's my son and a great horse. Chubby. That's another glorious day in the Centennial Valley. <laughs> Blackdale, looking towards Dillon. <laughs> Great guy. That's Clayton and her dog, Butch. That's Clayton in the middle fork of Blacktail. That's Sage Creek headquarters. Used to be the Cook Sheet Company. That's some of the ranch, most of it. Christy. Turgeon. That's kids trailing bulls. By the Buffalo Jump and the Blacktail. Sandy Nelson, one of our longtime employees. Todd Sawyer, Clover Creek Hill. Anna and Blacktail. That's coming off Blacktail Ridge. East Fork of the Blacktail is kind of in the right hand corner. It was another nice day. 
you see through these pictures, history is nothing without the people. Boy, on the right flies spider jets and through our military lands on aircraft carriers. Cover this book. It's like let's head it up pack trip eighty nine. Kids were heavily involved in four H as I was. That'll melt you. There's the running water at the Jake. Nathan Anderson, great employee. Basin. They're married now. <laughs> My better half. Right by that, where this picture is taken, there's 117 TP rings in one spot. Notice the improvised brain jacket on Anna. That's up Sage Good. It's a line of peaks. That's at headquarters looking towards Dylan. Bob and Rita Sawyer. Son-in-law. Two of my herd managers. <laughs> I am Christy. Doc Hawkins, historian and veterinarian in Dillon. That's headquarters. That's Centennial Valley. Not a good day to be out of there. 